Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me. My name is Deborah Loader. I am the registered dietitian and dietary manager here at Wickenburg Community Hospital. Today, we're going to talk about biotics, probiotics and prebiotics and antibiotics. You know, with nutrition, we always talk about a lot of different words and the terminology is kind of hard to keep up with. We talk about antioxidants, we talk about phytonutrients, phytochemicals, not to mention protein, carbohydrate, fat, all of those things, vitamins and minerals. So today it's the biotics, probiotics, prebiotics, and antibiotics, which of course you know is a medicine. So a biotic can be described as any living component that affects another organizer, or organism or shapes the ecosystem. So the ecosystem that we'll be talking about today is our gut ecosystem. So when I talk about the gut, it's the digestive system, but that's what we use, that's the terminology we use to talk about that whole digestive system. The gut ecosystem refers to the biological community of microorganisms that live in the environment of the human gut. gut. Although the bacteria belong to a lot of different groups and are present in our digestive system in different quantities, they work as a team, they play together, they get along, each having its own unique role to help digest food, boost the immune system, prevent infections, and even influencing mood and behavior. The benefits of a healthy gut ecosystem are it fuels the cells of our gut lining. So just having that really um, good, healthy gut ecosystem helps to keep the lining of our gut in good shape. Um, it acts as an antioxidant to uh, prevent damage to our cells. And we've talked a lot about antioxidants and how they help with our immune system. It also provides some anti-cancer properties and can help regulate, regulate our appetites. Some of these things can help regulate our cholesterol by lowering it. It can help combat inflammation, um, nourishing other beneficial bacteria. It can deter the microbes that are not good for us. So really having that really healthy system is very essential for good health. So, Probiotics help to keep or restore the order in which our gut, the order in our gut by adding beneficial bacteria to it. But we'll start first with talking about prebiotics. So probiotics are microbes. They are, they are a little bacteria. Prebiotics are the food that feeds those bacteria, those good bacteria in our gut. So what happens is high fiber foods are, are prebiotic. So the fiber is digested and fermented by the healthy gut bacteria. So when that fiber gets into the digestive system, that is where the good bacteria, the probiotics, help digest that fiber and that helps nourish the, those good bacteria and help them grow. Other foods that are not high in fiber but can act on um, pre prebiotics by helping them grow healthy bacteria, like bifidoba bacteria. So one of those examples is red wine. Red wine um, contains an antioxidant poly polyphenols, which are not digested by human cells but are digested in the in the gut. So that is real helpful. And you know, when we talk about red wine or any alcohol, we always recommend no more than one standard drink per day for women and no more than two standard drinks per day for men. Cocoa um, also contains an antioxidant phenol, bio, polyphenols, I'm sorry, having a hard time with that word today, that have beneficial prebiotic effects on the gut mi microbiota. So we talk a lot about dark chocolate these days and that a small amount of dark chocolate with cocoa, the cocoa percentage of 60 to 70%, that's really more beneficial and it does have that um, oxidative, um, 
oxidation reduction property in it so that antioxidant, remember, in both red wine and dark chocolate uh, can be beneficial, keeping in mind that we need to limit both of those. It's, remem it's important to remember that probiotics and prebiotics work synergistically, so that means that they work together. They both need to be present in order to have that healthy gut microbiome. So let's talk a little bit about antibiotics now. Um, so an antibiotic is an important tool when we have a bacterial infection. Depending on what kind of antibiotic it is, the medication will stop an, a, um, an infection by either killing the bacteria that are there or by preventing them from uh, reproducing. There are some um, broad spectrum antibiotics that that really attack a lot of different bacteria. So what, and, and then others just target one certain bacteria. And that's why sometimes the doctor will need to change the type of bacteria that he has you on, he or she has you on, because it may be that one antibiotic will target this bacteria, but maybe you have more of this bacteria, so they need to put, give you a different antibiotic to help prevent that particular bacteria. So, um, the antibiotics, remember, don't work against fungus or um, viruses. They only work against bacteria. Unfortunately, some, some of them, like the wide spectrum ones, can't always tell the difference between what is a good bacteria and what is a bad bacteria. So when you take an antibiotic, it can kill off or, or prevent your good bacteria from multiplying and being healthy. So that's one of the, um, one of the things that happens when we're on antibiotics. Um, they're not always the best thing to be on because first of all, it needs to be with um, um, bacteria that they're fighting, not the fungi or the virus, but also because they can kill off good bacteria. Um, antibiotics also become um, unable to work in a person's bo body. You can have such a resistance to antibiotics that they won't work, and they're so they're harming you as well as not doing you any, any good. So it's really important to only take antibiotics when it's really necessary and try other courses of treatment instead. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about Clostridium difficile, we call it C. diff. That's one of the infections that can happen when someone takes too many antibiotics or they're on antibiotic therapy for a long time. That can help, it help make, actually, an infection in their gut, which causes uh, terrible diarrhea, lots of pain and bloating, and it, um, it, it is also, it can infect other people. So it's really important to watch the antibiotics and to help maintain that good gut system, we can use probiotics and prebiotics. Remembering that we can't just take probiotics, we have to have the prebiotics that go along with them. So we'll talk about what, what is what in just a second. Um, a lot of people just with taking, even if they haven't become resistant to antibiotics, even if they, they're on their first or second course of antibiotics ever, they can develop um, digestive issues like bloating and gas and uh, diarrhea. So it's really important to, um, to have some probiotics when you're on any, any kind of antibiotic therapy. So the question has come up, um, should I take my probiotics with my antibiotics? Well, it's really important because remember, the, the antibiotic can't tell the difference between bacteria sometimes. So it's really important that you take your probiotics um, later or at a different time of day so that those antibiotics don't attack them. Um, after you finish a course of antibiotics, it's really important to continue the probiotics and um, to help you build back up a, a healthy gut uh, 
gut system. So I mentioned earlier that uh, prebiotics are what feeds the probiotics. So every organism needs to feed itself in order to be healthy and active. So that's the prebiotic fiber is what really helps us um, maintain that really healthy gut system. Um, fermented foods are really important today. Uh, scientists are really looking at how fermented foods like kimchi and um, sauerkraut, things like that, some pickles, are really uh, healthy ways to get probiotics um, to help our gut system. Um, and, you know, another question that comes up often is, when do I know how to, when do I know I should take probiotics? Well, one of the things is to talk to your doctor because um, you don't want to overdo a good thing. So you need to find some balance there. Um, so taking a supplement um, of a probiotic, I would say don't do it. Even though they're over the counter, I would say talk to your do doctor about it. Ask why, um, ask him, if, him or her if it's a good idea and how much you should take and what other things you should look at um, as far as side effects or anything like that. Um, the other thing about probiotics like this that you get over the counter is they're not FDA regulated. So that's, a, that's something to, import, to remember when we do any kind of dietary supplements, that they're not regulated by the FDA. So use caution and talk to your doctor when you're, when you're considering the use of these. Um, another thing that's really interesting is they're kind of expensive. This, this probiotic has 14 different probiotics in it, and um, it costs about, it was $30 for 60 pills. So that's 50 cents for a pill. Whereas this little yogurt over, this yogurt right here was 40 cents. And it not only gives you probiotics, but it also gives you um, protein and some good carbohydrates and calcium. So, so that's another reason that, and you know me, I always say get your nutrients from your food. And so I'm kind of going there with, with this too, to get your probiotics from food. This one is only acidophilus, and acidophilus is good for helping to um, digest especially milk so um, and it was only nine dollars for a hundred so it's a little bit more um, this uh, more affordable <clears throat> so you let's talk about the different foods that probiotics are found in probiotics are found in yogurt um, they're found in some cheeses such as gouda cheese cheddar cheese Swiss cheese um, it's found in uh, fermented vegetable products like kimchi and sauerkraut, some um, pickles, tofu, tempeh, which is, um, which is a fermented um, vegetable type protein. So this is vegan and it has um, a lot of uh, probiotics in it. Kombucha, if you've not heard about kombucha, it's a fermented tea. Um, and uh, for years, I'm, you know, I'm a person that was in the 70s, I was, um, you know, one of the, the flower children in the 70s as a young adult. And back then we made our own kombucha, and you still can. You get a, you get a, a start, it's like, sort of like a sour, sour dough starter. You get one from your friends, and then there's recipes that you put together in order to make this fermented beverage. Nowadays, you can buy it in every flavor. This one is tart cherry. This bottle is the serving size. For me, that's a lot. It's, how many ounces is it? 16, I imagine, 15. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, 70 calories. It does have added sugar. It is, the, the nutrients that are in here are just added sugar and one gram of protein. So basically that's what you're getting except for the probiotics. So if you wanna go that way, that's fine. You can also get probiotics from a cultured low-fat milk called kefir. 
This is um, this was three ninety nine for the bottle, and it has four servings in it. So once again, you're getting um, not only are you getting in a cup full of this your probiotics, but you're getting some carbohydrates and eleven grams of protein. So that would be a reason to go with something like this instead of maybe the kombucha um, or the the um, supplement. Uh, there's a few, um, Activia makes a, a little beverage, a little shot that is sort of like Yocult. Yocult is one of the, the products that's been on um, the market for oh, a long time that I know of. And it's a lactobacillus uh, casein um, probiotic and it, ha it says it has live and active probiotics in there. And you have just this little shot, which is um, <clears throat> a couple of ounces, actually. And in this, you get 50 calories. Um, it also has just some carbohydrates and a gram of protein. So this, if you know, the reason this might be good is if you just don't like to do these things. And so this is just a little shot that you drink, and you're done with it. So that's. Because um, some people say, well, I'm never going to eat kimchi or I'm never going to eat sauerkraut. And so if, um, if you're not willing to eat something like this, then the, the little shots like this might be something good to eat, to drink. Um, I, I wanted to demonstrate that um, a lot of the veg, uh, vegan types or the non-dairy yogurt alternatives are also supplemented with active and live cultures. And this one is an oat milk, so a milk that's produced from oatmeal, and it has um, it has active and light cultures, and I can't read them very well, but it does have one, two, three, four different um, active and light cultures. And in a second, we're going to go through some of those names. This is an almond milk. Um, yogurt alternative and it too has one, two, three, four, five live cultures in it. As, um, as do the, just the dairy um, Greek yogurts and as I mentioned, the dairy just plain yogurt that's not a Greek yogurt. Um, this is Activia. We've seen Activia on the market for a long time and I think that um, it, it got to be really popular and people uh, really like to use it for gut health and um, so this is one of those things that the recommendation is two of these a day and each um, has 90 calories and four grams of protein but th uh, if you look at the the Greek yogurt the, the good thing about it is not only does it have the um, the cultures the live um, probiotics, but it has 14 grams of protein. So that's where you can kind of get two things for your money. You're getting a really good healthy source of protein and calcium and some other vitamins and minerals, as well as the, um, the live cultures from the probiotics. If you look at some foods um, like the, the kimchi and the, um, the kraut, the sauerkraut, they are not only probiotics, but they are also prebiotics. So in this, you get, in this food source, you get the probiotics, which are also prebiotics. So they work together, remember, and they get down there together in the, the gut, in the digestive system, and that's where they do their work together in order to do all those things that we learned about early on. Um, so I'm going to, I just, you know, I usually, when we're live, when we get to be live uh, in person, I ha always have a PowerPoint presentation, and I really, um, I rely on that a lot to um, do my presentations. I also rely on your reactions, and so sometimes when I'm talking to the camera, I can get kind of tongue twisted and forget things. So today, what I did is I made just a few things that would have been slides if I had done a PowerPoint just to show you some of the common species of probiotics. So this first one, this is one of this, the species of probiotics. It's bifo, 
bifidobacteria. Okay, bifidobacteria. This species of bacteria is commonly used in foods and supplements. They are thought to support the immune system, limit the growth of harmful bacteria in the intestine, and help in breaking down lactose into nutrients that the body can use. So the next species is called lactobacillus. Lactobacillus is a species of bacteria that produces lactase. Lactase is the enzyme that helps to digest milk. So when someone is lactose intolerant, they don't have this enzyme. So using lactobacillus would help break down that lactose um, into, or, or it's a milk sugar, so it would help it. Um, they also produce lactic acid, which helps control the population of bad bacteria. And it also serves as muscle fuel and increases the body's absorption of minerals. So that's one of, uh, those are the two common species. <laughs> Now we're going to look at strains. So there's the species and then under it each of these species has strains of bacteria. So the first one is B. anomalous. So if you'll look at that B, that's, that's because it's under the species of bifidobacteria. Okay, are you following me? I hope you are. This is kind of a little science lesson, I guess. So the B. animalis, uh, this strain is an ingredient in Dannon's yogurt activity product. So that's what they use in the activity product to help um, aid in digestion and fight foodborne bacteria. It also is thought to help with your immune system. And then the B. brevet, once again back to um, bifidobacteria, brevet, this strain lives in your digestive tract and in, in both in and in the vagina and in both places it fights off infection causing bacteria or yeast. So that's why when when people have urinary tract infections or yeast infections, we dietitians recommend to to eat yogurt because it will help with uh, fighting off that bacteria or yeast. It helps your body to absorb nutrients by fermenting sugars. It also breaks down plant fiber to make it digestible. So those are the strains, some of the strains of, of uh, beta probiotic. And then there's B. lactis. This is derived from raw milk. It's an ingredient in one of the um, infant formulas put out by Nestle's it's Good Start Natural Cultures, and so that's, um, that's how a baby formula has picked up the ball on using probiotics in their baby formula. Um, it also, this particular one, um, the B. lactis, helps, um, is a starter for making buttermilk, cottage cheese, and some other cheeses. So what does that tell us? It also tells us that Buttermilk would be a good uh, choice for um, probiotics, as well as cottage cheese, and I mentioned the other cheeses earlier on, Gouda and cheddar and a couple of others. And then there's B. longum. This strain lives in your gastrointestinal tract. It helps to break down carbohydrates and can function as an antioxidant. Remember, the antioxidant is what helps prevent oxidation on our, in our cells. And then there's L, now we're to the L for the lactobacillus. Remember we talked about the lactobacillus species. And so now there's a couple of strains. L acidophilus, this strain is found in the small intestine and in the vagina. It helps digestion and may help fight off vaginal bacteria, also what causes your urinary tract infections or yeast infections. You can find it in yogurt and fermented soy products products such as miso, and I didn't find miso today in the grocery store, um, but that would be, that is what is in this uh, probiotic. Remember, this supplement is just acidophilus, so it would help um, if you had a yeast infection or a urinary tract infection. And then L. ruteri, 
This strain is found in the intestine and also in the mouth. And one study showed that it decreases oral bacteria that causes tooth decay. And it's also thought to help in the digestive system. So that would be a reason to, another reason to perhaps use um, a, a probiotic. So let's kind of recap here. Um, if you decide that you want to start on a probiotic, I would recommend that you start with foods. Um, it's not necessary to go out and spend a lot of money on supplements and remember that these are not FDA um, regulated. So it's really important to start eating these foods. I would, if you're not already used to some of these things, I would say start it slowly. If you are on antibiotics and you want to take or use probiotics to help prevent that gas and bloating and things like that, you know, don't eat them, eat these things at the same time that you're taking your antibiotic. Let a few hours go by before you, um, before you eat the foods or let a few hours go by before you take your antibiotics, remembering that you need to take them as scheduled. The other thing is to um, check on the, um, check to make sure that they are, that they contain the live, I, I can see it better on this, um, right here, six live and active cultures. So make sure that it says that on the food product that you're going to eat. And um, I will warn you though that these don't say that. But the kombucha, the kefir, the yakult um, on the yogurts all say active cultures. So you want to make sure that they're active and live when you eat them. So watch your, um, your manufacturer use by date. You don't want to use something that's too old because that could have affected um, the cultures in there. Um, let's see. The other thing is, I, I mentioned this already once, but I avoid the use of antibiotics as much as possible. So how can we do that? Well, we can maintain a healthy immune system by using um, some of these products and by watching your diet and make sure that you're getting plenty of phytonutrients in your diet to help uh, increase your immune immunity. So what are those things? Well, remember those dark, green leafy vegetables, bright berries, you know, adding some of those berries to your, um, your plain yogurt will just, your probiotics are in here and your prebiotics are in those bright blue uh, berries. So you're getting the anti, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, you're getting the probiotics, the prebiotics, and you're getting the phytonutrients that all are gonna to work together to help you with your immune system. So what it really gets down to is eat well to help strengthen your immune system. The other thing is to help strengthen your immune system is get lots of sleep, take good care of yourself. You know, we want to wash our hands and do all the things that we're talking about these days with COVID. So that's some of the, those are some of the things that you can do to strengthen your immune system so that you won't need to have antibiotics. And don't go to the doctor and ask for antibiotics if you, know, if you just have a little viral cold because if you take those antibiotics, you can affect your, um, your gut um, microbiome. Um, okay, that's, I think I've said everything. And I want you to know that we're going to put this handout um, up for your, you to look at. You can print it off. And this is a really nice little handout and one of the few that is endorsed by the di Dietitians in Integrative and Functional Medicine, which is a part of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which I'm a member of and which you can really rely on to get good information about nutrition. This talks about prebiotics and probiotics, lists sources of those. So on this side, it tells us about probiotics and it lists things like the, like the um, fermented things and it lists over on the other side, sources of prebiotics. So this has asparagus, avocado, 
banana, dandelion greens, a whole list of things that are really good prebiotics. It has on here yogurt and kefir, which are both probiotics and prebiotics. So really good to remember that. On the back of this little handout, it talks about how to incorporate these food items into breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks. So um, you can get a lot of good information there. And last but not least, it has a recipe for green cabbage, carrot, and ginger kraut. And I'm going to try this. I love ginger, and I love, I, I am one of those people who does love sauerkraut. So I'm going to make this and, um, and use it on, you can put it on sandwiches. You know, the classic Reuben sandwich is great. Um, so I, I encourage you to go ahead and look at um, this um, handout when it is posted. You can also go to the uh, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics website where you can find a lot of good information on their public pages. And then last but not least, if you want to discuss this or other nutrition related topics, I would love to have you schedule an appointment to come into the hospital to meet with me. Uh, we are getting some insurance coverage and um, you will also al always get an in or a receipt that you can send to your insurance company to see if they will reimburse you. Uh, we're taking Medicare for certain um, illnesses as well. And if you would like an appointment, please call my scheduler, Sandy, and the number to reach her directly is 928-668-1800. One, one. So once again, it's Sandy at 928-668-1811. I really thank you for watching today. I hope that um, you will join us next time. We have some more uh, classes. I think we're going to do something on uh, homemade salad dressings. So you might want to really check that out. So we will be announcing that um, soon, I hope. and get that information out to you. And so if you have any questions um, about nutrition, please feel free to reach out to me. And in the meantime, stay healthy, stay hydrated in these hot temperatures, and then please wear your masks, wash your hands, avoid touching your face, and avoid um, Crowds. Stay six feet away from people with social distancing and stay healthy and happy. See you later.